Okay. It just takes a minute to get everything situated, right? I planted flowers and a tomato in the middle and flowers on either side for my mother-in-law. Aren't they very pretty? I love them so much. Um, hello, I am Sam Pizer and this is Wellness Week Day 3 um, in the Start Where You're At Facebook group. Um, I have my phone sitting here so I can see if anybody comes on live in Facebook. If you want to come onto the Zoom, you can go get that, that link and click on it. I posted it earlier and you can join in on Zoom. And if you have anything that comes up that you want to talk about, we can do that while we're on here. Um, let's see. I am going to share my screen and just kind of go over the basics again. So this is the web page that when you join the challenge, if you join the challenge through um, an opt-in where you had to, you put your email in, this is where it sent you. And this is where the videos for the week will be housed and any other information. Um, I'm kind of, I'm updating the page with the time um, that I decide to go live each day. And it's kind of been fly by the seat of my pants. And then it has the Zoom link on this page also, if you want to um, check that out. I actually, I just remembered that apparently it's not actually linked. So I will go and fix that. So you can copy and paste that link into your browser and then it will take you to the Zoom call. Um, and then the information about the Commit to Group Coaching Community, click on that and it will take you to the community um, sales page. And it talks about what all is included. And you can hear my dog drinking, I apologize. You can pay monthly for $49 a month. You can pay yearly for $490. If you sign up by Sunday, you get, if you pay monthly, you get a free introduction call to talk about um, what it is you want to work on and get started on that. If you pay yearly, you get one call per month to talk about whatever it is that you have going on, whatever you want to talk about. Um, so if you do that by Sunday, you get those calls. There is also a VIP level. If you sign up for the VIP level, you get two 30-minute calls per month. Um, so there is that, and that's a monthly thing. Okay, so that is the sales page. And then down here, we have the replays and the downloads. So I have the videos posted as well as underneath the videos are, if you just want to listen, you're out for a walk and you just want to listen, you can just click that and you can download the audio and listen. Click this downloads button. It takes you to the Google Drive that I have set up with the material and it has the workbook, has the wellness wheel all by itself. And it has this handy dandy daily routine page, which I absolutely enjoy. <laughs> so this is to map out your habits that you want to do and then track them with the little habit tracker. And I just thought that was fun. So I put that in there. And that is that information. This web page will stay live. So anytime you want to come back and view that information, it will be there. And that is that. Okay, now, so this week we are talking all about wellness and what it looks like to create wellness. We talked about the, we went through the wellness wheel um, and you decided on an area that you wanted to focus on to create wellness 
in what area that is that you want to be working on. And I encourage you to choose an area that will impact the other areas. So whatever it is that you're working on. As we're talking about this false and true pleasure, be thinking about how this impacts that area that you want to be working on. Um, so again, I'm all about the mindset behind the things that we do and being aware of how our thoughts impact the results that we get, how our thoughts are impacting our daily life, how we feel, the things that we do. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The way that you think creates the person that you are because the way that you think determines the actions that you're going to take, the things that you're going to do on a regular basis. So that being said, we think with our brain. And our brain's primary, well, besides keeping us alive, our that um, primal brain has three motivations. It's called the motivational triad. Those three motivations are seek pleasure, avoid pain, and exert the least amount of energy. So your habit brain, that brain that is throwing out excuses for why you can't do things, think, things that make you feel scared to keep you where you're at, that is your brain doing its job to keep you safe and to exert as little energy as possible. So with the motivational triad in mind, we're, it's, it's constantly looking, seeking for danger, and looking for pleasure to move towards. Um, and it wants you to exert as little energy as possible. My primal brain is, the force is strong. <laughs> um, so in that vein, in that we're always seeking pleasure, we, especially now, we have so many sources that we believe are, are pleasure, are pleasurable, that do not lead to true pleasure. Um, overeating, over drinking, over anything, over shopping, over exercising, anything that is, is going to end up having a net negative impact is most likely a false pleasure. It, it sounds good and it feels good at the time, but then after a minute or a couple minutes, the regret or shame or defeat sets in. So we are driven to experience pleasure. And with the invention of like, refined sugar and flour, we get all kinds of pleasure from those things, alcohol, pornography, um, the dopamine hit you get from clicking the add to cart button on Amazon or whatever your online shopping preference is. That all feels really good when you do it. And that is false pleasure. And I'm not saying that all shopping is false pleasure. All sugar is not false pleasure. All alcohol is not false pleasure. It's how we use it. Um, and if you're constantly, if you're using it in a way that it, it does lead to that false pleasure, it's creating a drive to always have more, always have more, always have more. It's intense. You get instant gratification and you can never get enough. You're always wanting more, always wanting more, always wanting more. It has a short term effect. And again, it's like you hit, you have it. That pleasure is like, oh, the pleasure wears off. You want more, you want more and you want more and you want more. It leaves you feeling dissatisfied 
and always, again, creates that need for more, that desire for more. You're only feeling that satisfaction when you're enjoying the false pleasure. Like it feels good at the time. And then afterwards, you're either driven for more or in regret for having done it, which typically leads you to seek more. Again, it has the false pleasure has a net negative impact. It leaves you, it keeps you from doing the things that you want to be doing. It leads to weight gain. It leads, leads to addiction. It leads to you being in debt. It leads to, and this is all, you know, that's the extreme cases. Um, typically, it just leads to regret, weight gain, um, having a closet full of clothes that you don't wear, whatever it is. Um, it can lead to dependence. If you, I mean, there are people that are addicted to shopping, to porn, to alcohol, to drugs. People say they're addicted to sugar. And I actually don't really, I mean, I'm sure that there is a chemical point that you get to dependence and the addiction. I, for most people, I would say it's a habit. So really it's, you're in the habit of over whatevering, which creates that desire for more all the time. It gets any of the, these false pleasures, they get in the way of our long-term goals because we are seeking out this false pleasure to avoid negative emotions. And that's a whole thing that we talk about in the group and we can dive into if you join the group and or hop on one of the coaching calls. I posted the link in yesterday's video in the comments if you want to get on a call and talk about stuff. So this false pleasure, we're seeking this false pleasure to avoid feeling negative emotions, to avoid feeling sad, avoid feeling lonely, avoid feeling regret, avoid um, anything that feels bad to us. And of course, we're going to feel bad sometimes. We're going to have negative emotions because we're human. Life is rhythmic. It's up and down. It's good and bad. And that's okay. Um, so in order to reach goals and create lasting change, we have to be comfortable experiencing those negative emotions and not turn to the shopping, the food the alcohol, whatever it is. Um, the negative or the false pleasure generally leads to avoiding or escaping, numbing out, um, scrolling, whatever it is. And the value of it depreciates. Again, you always need more, you need more, you need more. And some examples of this are cake, cake, cookies, brownies, um, alcohol, gaming, gaming can be, get, you get that dopamine hit and you want to play more and more and more and more, which I doubt that any of us have that problem, but we may know somebody that does. Scrolling on social media, shopping, um, extreme heroin, wine, vodka, escape mechanisms bring false pleasure because as you are, when you escape whatever it is that you're trying to avoid, you get that sense of instant pleasure because you're avoiding that thing. But the net negative impact is you have to go back and you have to experience that. So you're just prolonging it. Another, it's kind of weird, but angry outbursts, that can be a false pleasure because when you just let yourself say everything you want to say and it feels so good to let it all out in the moment but then the net negative impact is then you have to deal with the fallout of that so just be thinking about the change that you want to create in your life that folk the area that you want to focus on for wellness what are the false pleasures that you seek out? What are the false pleasures that you can identify in your own life? And I wanna say first, 
first and foremost, nothing that I ever teach or talk about is ever meant to create guilt, shame, regret, anything like that. This is to create awareness because without awareness, we're, we stay stuck. We don't have the insight to see, oh, wow, look at what this, the impact this is having in my life. And it might not be a bad thing, but if you're using it to avoid other things, then it might be having a net negative impact and you might want to question how much you're doing that thing or how much you're allowing or whatever. So just be thinking, okay, this is the area I'm working on. What things do I do that keep me from creating wellness in this area? And what is that, what is that quick hit of pleasure that I get? And then what is the net negative impact of that? This is a great journal exercise. And let me tell you, I am always dealing with this. I am, I am an Enneagram 8. And um, one of our, I don't know, I don't know a ton about the Enneagram, but I am completely identified as an 8. Um, less. I, I'm in the gut, in the gut triad or whatever. So I'm, I have a lust for all the things, right? And that's, that is kind of typical of an Enneagram 8. So this seeking pleasure, seeking pleasure, seeking pleasure is something that I definitely um, am aware of that is always there that I am working on. So there is no shame in my game. I do not judge at all. Okay, so then let's look at what natural true pleasure is. And I don't think I said when the, the false pleasure, you get like a super strong, powerful dopamine hit. And you're like, oh, that's so good. That's so delicious. That feels amazing. I want more of that. And that's what that dopamine creates a desire for more. That's what the dopamine does. So in the false pleasure, in the concentrated flour, sugar, alcohol, porn is concentrated sex. Um, you get that intense feeling of pleasure that does not last long. The natural pleasure, you get a low dop dopamine hit. So if you're super um, driven by the false pleasures, a sugar addict or a, you know, a chronic shopper, or whatever, then the natural pleasure is kind of like, eh, that doesn't even really register on the Richter scale. So it's not, it's not worth it. It's, it's a learned <laughs> appreciation. If this is something that you deal with, minimizing that false pleasure that you experience, then raises the experience, you, you notice the experience of the true pleasure more. And I think about it like when I'm in a really um, a good place of not having sugar, like not eating refined sugar, not having cookies, cake, whatever. Um, when I eat an apple, it's like, oh, this is so delicious. And that's just, it's the natural sugar compared to the sugar in a piece of cake with lard and sugar frosting that I absolutely love. Like the two are incomparable. But if I'm not, if I haven't had cake or cookies or anything like that for two months and I have an apple, that apple is delicious. So you can resensitize yourself to enjoy more fully that natural pleasure, that true pleasure, that low dopamine response that you get. It's more moderate when you're experiencing true natural pleasure. It's more moderate. It's not that high hit of the dopamine. 
it might lead to, it might be delayed gratification. You might like exercise. You are working out and building those endorphins, but in the moment you're not really enjoying doing whatever it is. But when those endorphins kick in, you get that delayed gratification. You get the delayed gratification of stronger muscles and a smaller body and whatever. Um, the true pleasure has a lasting effect. You, as you think about it, you have positive, like it creates more pleasure as you're thinking about that true pleasure thing. It leads to feelings of satisfaction. It only, they only have positive impacts. True pleasure is always consistent with our goals, with our long-term goals. It allows, it, true pleasure allows for negative emotions. It's okay, you get comfortable being uncomfortable and it's okay. True pleasure leads to more pleasure. <laughs> And it leads to connection with yourself, with God, with others, and the value of it appreciates, it builds. Um, some things, some examples of true pleasure, time with family, um, hugs, natural sugars and fruit, exercise, achieving goals, music, art, vulnerable conversations. Remember I said with the um, false pleasure, that angry outburst of like the getting it all out. And then that feels really good to get it out in the moment, but then you have to deal with the backlash and whatever. Vulnerable conversations where you share your heart. It's not easy in the moment, but you get that delayed gratification of this has drawn us closer together. This has improved our relationships. It's discomfort on purpose sometimes, which I, that's one of the things that I write in my journal every day. Discomfort on purpose helps me to be the person that I want to be. So again, what are the natural pleasures, the true pleasures that are going to motivate you towards reaching your goals and help you to create wellness in that area? that you're wanting to improve. And again, excellent, <laughs> excellent journaling opportunity. So looking at what are the false pleasures that I indulge in and do I want to eliminate them? Is there, or is there something that I want to eliminate? Is there something that I want to definitely pay attention to or cut back on that's getting in the way of wellness in this area? And what are the true pleasures that I can increase? How can I decrease false pleasures and increase the true natural pleasures to help me to create more wellness in this area that I'm working on? And I imagine anytime that you're doing that, anytime that you're decreasing the false pleasure and increasing the true pleasure, you're creating more wellness in you as a person, which is going to be creating more wellness in your whole life. So again, and as always, I would love to hear what you think. I would love to um, hear questions, comments, and be able to address specific areas that you're working on. Um, and tomorrow, what are we talking about tomorrow? I think physical and mental wellness. I think we're, I'm going to do, get into some practical stuff tomorrow um, about creating physical and mental emotional wellness or increasing that. And that is what I have for today. I appreciate you being here. Again, I would love to hear from you and share with your friends. If you are enjoying this, if you're, if, if, even if it's just making you think about things and bringing you some awareness to things that you don't typically think about, um, I would love to hear about that. Share with your friends, join, commit to you group coaching. Love to have you in there. And tomorrow, today's, what, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow is our 
first June call in the Commit to Group Coaching community talking about weight loss. And we're going through the original weight loss course. And that is going to be so fun to watch really old videos. And I'll be critiquing myself and looking at what I want to change and update in that weight loss course. So I would love to have you in the Commit to Group Coaching community. And I would love to hear from you. Have a great day.